Hi, my name is Giuliano Di Porto. I'm the Emergency Medicine Ultrasound Fellow at the University of Florida. We're going to be talking today about pulmonary embolism. We're going to start looking at the lung fields using the Blue Protocol. There's a separate video on the Blue Protocol that you can uh, make reference to so you have the exact points that you need. But we're going to be placing the probe and looking at the lung fields. And we're going to be looking for the presence or the absence, basically, of A lines. You want to look in both fields. There's, of course, should be cardiac activity on the left side. If you do see bilateral A lines, you should proceed and you should do a DVT study on your patient. There's also a separate video that will show you how to do a proper DVT scan. Then you can look, obviously, for signs of uh, right heart strain. You do a, you can do a subcostal view. You're going to place your probe about one to two centimeters subsiphoid, as parallel as you can, to try to see the subcostal view. You should be able to see the liver, the right ventricle, and the left atrium, and the top part of your screen with the left ventricle and left atrium in the inferior part of your screen. And when you're assessing the subcostal view, you always assess for cardiac motion and any pericardial effusion. And in this case, you're looking for right heart strain. So, you're gonna... so now we're going to do the apical view, and you should be more or less at the level of the precordium. So you're going to be midclavicular line of the fourth, fifth intercostal space, uh, and you want to put your probe pointing towards the base of the heart. You should be able to visualize the four chambers. You're going to have on the left side of your screen. You should have the right atrium, right ventricle and on the left side of your screen you should be able to visualize the left ventricle and left atrium. And what you're looking for here is to see if the diameter of the ventricles is has changed. Normally the left ventricle has higher pressure, you should have a higher diameter in the left ventricle. So what you're looking for is signs of right heart strain and then you would see increased diameter of the right ventricle. So let's look at the parasternal short axis in order to evaluate for a right heart strain in the case of a potential pulmonary embolism. So you want to have your probe at the midclavicular line about the 4 to 5th intercostal space. Your indicator probe should be pointing towards the patient's left shoulder. And you want to place your probe and you should be able to visualize the short axis of the heart where you're going to see the left and the right ventricle. The left ventricle is normally circular. The right ventricle is normally more triangular in appearance. And in the case of a pulmonary embolism, when you're going to have increased pressures in the right ventricle, that normally can produce bowing of the septum, giving what it's called the D sign due to the increased pressure. So, from the position either of the papillary muscles or the mitral valve, if you slowly tilt your probe towards the base of the heart, you should have the aortic valve in view. And if you tilt a little bit more, you should have the window where you can visualize the pulmonary artery. If you have a big embolus, like a cell embolus, you should be able to detect any abnormalities using this view.